Hello and welcome to Granada Reports, live with the latest across the northwest. Hello, on the programme this evening. I've got a little boy, I've got a granddaughter, she's severely blind and it's just hard work. Just keeping it warm really. There's always people worse than me. Joe is one of dozens of people that James Thank will help you. today as the cost of living continues to bite. How worried are you about people when you go into their homes and see what they're facing on a day-to-day -day basis? I worry because these people, it may not be the cold that kills them, it's the anxiety and the suicidal thoughts. Early post-mortem results show that Haley died from sepsis and pneumonia, but the little girl wasn't tested for either at the hospital. Her parents are now demanding to know why. Do you feel like you've got answers from the post-mortem? <laughs> it's hard to take, uh, very well, very hard to take. Um, it, may, it makes me very angry. The hospital declared a critical incident on the 20th. At the time, it said unprecedented numbers of people were turning up at a &E. At the time, it urged people not to attend unless they had a life or limb threatening emergency. So clearly a hospital under a lot of strain. That, though, won't provide much comfort to Haley's family. I've struggled with drink, depression, suicidal thoughts. I've, uh, I've, I've attempted my own life uh, on two occasions. Paul Stewart always dreamed of being a professional footballer. But it was this dream that turned into a nightmare from which he still hasn't recovered. Well, tonight's rally is one of just many taking place across the country, organised by campaign group Enough is Enough. You might have heard a bit about them over the past few weeks. It was set up in the face of the cost of living crisis in a bid to fight just that. Low wages, rising bills, food poverty, and what they say is a society run only for the wealthy elite. Now, someone that can tell us a little bit more about this campaign and what we can expect from the rally tonight is Eddie Dempsey from the RMT Union. Eddie, tell us, what, what do you hope to achieve with this? Well, right now, everyone in this country is feeling the pinch. Well, Liz Truss is the fourth leader of the Tory party, the UK's fourth prime minister in six years. But despite her time in the cabinet, it's clear that many voters don't know a lot about the woman, if anything, that's moved into number 10 today. So I'm here in Bowdoin to talk to local Conservatives to find out why they've put their trust in Liz Truss. So Deborah, you voted for Liz Truss. Tell the viewers what you saw in her. These new parents have only just met, but already have plenty to talk about. Amy, Martin, Megan and Jack have all spent time in this bereavement suite at Royal Preston Hospital after going through the heartache of losing a baby. But they also have something else uniting them. They're rainbow babies. It was the best four days of, of our life. <laughs> Some people will see it as a really tough sentence. Some of our viewers, though, will be pleased to know that the justice system is really trying to, you know, toughen up on gang crime yeah. because I, of the devastating impact on communities. Again, I absolutely agree and believe it's important that as a society we tackle youth violence. It's thought the legal costs of this case will be around three million pounds, most of which Rebecca Vardy will have to pay. Well, Zoe's here now. And has there been reaction, Zoe, from the two main players in this case? Yes, both Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy issued statements after the judgment. Both, of course, very different statements. Colleen Rooney said she was pleased that the ruling went in her favour, but that she never believed the case should have ended up in court in the first place. This is the moment that Gwen and Gwen Manikin came face to face. This medical training doll has been modelled on the eight-year-old girl from Formby in a world first for the healthcare industry. Ever since Hollywood star Ryan Reynolds told his 44 million Instagram followers that Light of India in Ellesmere Port had the best food in Europe, customers old and new have been desperate to get a taste. What was going through your head when you saw Ryan Reynolds, Hollywood movie star, who's got 40 million Instagram followers, posted about your restaurant? Just couldn't believe it at the time. I thought it was, I, I, could, I honestly couldn't believe it. Yes, Kamal, that's right, a very disruptive day for many. It's now rush hour, but in fact, today, there's no rush at all. In fact, the last train to leave this station left almost two hours ago and just to put it into a little bit of perspective about how quiet it's been today by 11 o'clock yesterday morning 13,000 passengers had gone through this station 
Today, just under 3,000. As a result of their experiences, 26% said they now avoid going out or socialising altogether. It's rare that someone would publicly abuse me, although it has happened to people in our team, like on nights out. A reunion made possible by the most remarkable coincidence. Brian Abram almost died in a cycling accident in Tameside in 2013. Nine years later, he's meeting the man who saved his life. And it's all thanks to eight-year-old Emily O'Gorman from Warrington. So let's go and give them this lovely award. How did you know her here? Well, you know, we've, we've got our sources, haven't we, Steve? <laughs> don't, be, don't be incriminating me. Did you not? <laughs> um, How do you feel? I don't know, it's just a bit... Um... Before we go, head to our website if you want to find out the name of power couple Molly May Haig and Tommy Fury's baby. A clue, it's Disney inspired. Very interesting. I'm still thinking about Jean and Derek. What a story. Love them. Awesome. Love them. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.